Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So last week I had a chance to talk to you guys a little bit about particles and we did an overview of the particles in general. So this week I'd like to take a more in-depth look at the particle system and we'll start by taking a look at the emitter. Um, so I've just created a scene here that's pretty much an empty scene. There are the three main elements that we always have to have, your particle system composite, your baker, and your visualizer uh, right there in my, in my view. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in my sprite emitter. So it's called a sprite emitter because it emits sprites. And um, if you think of what emitting means, emitting is just creating. Like it's, uh, um, you know, it, something can emit radiation. Radiation will come out of it, right? So an emitter creates things. And then a sprite is a small drawing that we use to represent what the particle looks like. So we can plug in any kind of a drawing layer into our emitter. So I can actually just take the drawing layer that I have right now. I only have, you know, my default drawing layer from the project. I could just cut it out and go inside here and paste it in. And I'll just connect it there to the left hand side of my sprite. So today the main thing that I want to talk about is the emitter. And inside of your emitter, there are two tabs that define how things work. You've got a generation tab and you have a rendering tab. So you, if you think about it, the generation tab um, lets you control how things are generated, how they're created. Whereas the rendering tab lets you control how they behave and what they look like. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the generation tab. The first thing that's the most important and very confusing thing is the particle types. And it's, it's so hard for me to try and think of a way of making this stuff easy because I think this is something that we're going to have to work on also in the next version of Harmony because it is we wanted to give as much flexibility as possible but in order to give as much flexibility as possible there are lots of parameters that you can work with and so it's kind of like you know we just had to decide at one point how we wanted to do things and um, they ended up maybe being a little bit more complex than they need to be but let me just go ahead and do it break it down the most simple way I can think of um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and clear out my color palette here and I'll create a new palette because I want to do this the way that I think is the most easy way to understand is just by creating some uh, basic default color kind of things. So I'm just going to go in there and I'll create a red particle, I'm going to have a yellow particle, I'm going to have a green one, I'm going to have a blue one, and I'll do a pink one. Okay, so let's just label these also with numbers so particle number one is going to be one is going to be red particle number two will be yellow particle number three will be green particle number four is going to be blue and then we have particle number five my favorite pink one okay so now I've got all these particles in here but I haven't actually decided how to generate or where to generate these things so if I go back into my network view I've got a sprite connected to my emitter but I don't have any region where those sprites are being created. So in order to actually create the particles, I need to con uh, connect something here to the other side of my emitter. And if I go in here, there are two different types of regions that you can create. You could create a 3D region, uh, which is like a sphere or a cube. And you could create also a planar region, which is like a flat circle or a square. So I'll just go ahead and do it with a 3D region for no particular reason and I'll connect it in there. And um, you probably also want to adjust, you know, the size and position and so on of, of where this region is. So for me to do that, I will go and do a little trick here. I'll go to Windows, Toolbars, and then Camera View. I like to use buttons, so I put my buttons on there. And there's uh, Show Control and Hide All Controls. That's also View Show Control. That's this one. So it's the same one that you use to turn on the path. So you might be accustomed or used to using the shortcut. I'm on a Mac, and sometimes it does some crazy, like, fly-out window stuff when I hit Apple F11, so that's why I don't tend to try and use that one. Um, but you can also customize this toolbar to make sure that they're on there. So if for some reason they're not on that camera view toolbar, then you can add them there. So then when I have my region selected, now I can hit the Show Control button. And um, unfortunately, the the particles that I made for number one are all red and the region is also red so hopefully you can see what it looks like but I can basically make larger or smaller the the region where they're connected and by default the region here is a sphere 
Now, if I go inside the properties of the region, I can change it from a sphere to a cylinder or a box. Um, so, yeah, let's just leave it as a box, maybe. And you can, um, in here, you can adjust the parameters of the box, but those parameters are also adjusted when you use the transform tool to adjust it. And if you have the animate button turned on, just like with uh, a, a layer, if you animate or have the animate button turned on when you change the size of a region, it will create a keyframe. And so that means that you can actually animate the size of a region over time, which is really cool. And on top of that, you can animate where it is. So if you add a peg there, I can just hit uh, Control or Apple P to add a peg. And let's make this a 3D peg. So if you add a peg to your region, then you can also manipulate you know, like where it is, how how it's oriented in space. So my MacBook Air here chugs a, a little bit because I probably have too many particles, but see how I can uh, rotate that region in space, and then I can also check it out in my perspective view. So I'll just turn off my region again for a second here so that we can take a look at my particles. So, so far, I only have number one showing. Remember, my number one was a, was a red number one, and I also have a lot of particles in there. So I have it right now creating 100 particles on every frame. That's way too many for this example for me to show you what it looks like. So let's just have it create one particle on every frame. And then I've got the number, I've got uh, the probability of generating particles is at 100. So what that means is if the probability is at 100, it's 100% pro probable that every frame it will create one particle. Sometimes you want to create only one particle every four frames. So if you only want to create a particle every four frames, then you turn the probability down to 25%. And that means on every frame there's a 25% probability that it will create a particle. Um, it's easier to create more particles, like you can always set it to 100% if you're going to do more than one. But if you're going to create less than one on every frame, that probability factor gives it a bit of a randomness. So let's just do that for argument's sake. Let's put it down to 25. So I have a 25% probability that it's going to create a particle in every frame. I also have down here in my baker, I have a number of pre-roll frames. So that's why there's already a certain number of um, particles that have been created there already. And now if I go forward in time, it's just continuing to create ones. 